Welcome to the 1940s Gladiator Round Tournament. This is the semi-final matchup. Today's comparison features Clarence Ross and John Grimmick, two of the all-time greats of this decade. Now, I am going with Ross in this one. May not be that fair. It seems John Grimmick is a little too relaxed, perhaps, in this relaxed position. And Grimmick really looks good. Look at that tiny little wee waist and nice feet taper as well. It appears Grimmick has the edge as far as the arms. Look at the size of those little things. The chest, perhaps. I don't know. Seems to be a toss-up. But either way... I'm giving this one to Clarence Ross, one to nothing. Here we have a nice little hands-on-hips pose, I guess you could call it. Somewhat of a front relaxed, but man, this Grimmick is really flexed up for this one. So this one is fair. And I am still leaning toward Clarence Ross, that small little waist. Well, there is qualities of John Grimmick that I do appreciate. Look at those arms once again. For a short, stocky man, he has a good set of arms. But the chest this time, I would definitely say Clarence Ross has a better set of pecs for sure. The abs, don't they're not quite as hard and grainy as Grimmick's set of abs, but they seem to be more aesthetically pleasing. I'm, this one is definitely a tough one to judge as John Grimmick has never lost a bodybuilding competition in his life, and numerous times has scored ahead of Clarence Ross. But there is no politics here. I am not playing favorites. I am judging this one straight down the line. And this will be a front double bicep pose, and Grimmick finally gets a point. So it is two to one still for Clarence Ross, but Grimmick could come back from the deficit. The arms, this the arms play a much better, bigger part in the front double bicep, of course. And he does have a bigger, better set of guns. And he is tilted thusly, creating a little bit better of a V taper as well. So John Grimmick fetches a point for himself. Here in the front lat spread. And once again, I am going with Ross. It seems perhaps politics... Always edged out a victory for John Grimmick, at least uh, so far, so far. This competition is far from over. Both men in tremendous conditioning, or tremendous condition, rather, for the 1940s. I mean, come on. The chest development definitely, I would say, goes to Ross. He has a better set of packs. John Grimmick has a really stocky type physique. Not quite as aesthetic, in my opinion, as Clarence Ross. Three to one for Clarence. And wow, what a dominant victory for Mr. Ross here in the side chest pose. Now I expect some controversy from a lot of John Grimmick fans, but I expect no controversy whatsoever, at least in this pose. Look at those big set of, well, tits. He has big man boobs does Clarence Ross. Looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger, for goodness sakes. Uh, John Grimmick, a little bit light in the peck department. Good set of guns, though. Nice rib cage expansion. He perhaps has a better vacuum between the two, but nothing doing. This is a dominant, and I mean dominant, victory for Clarence. This is a very close decision to make here in the rear double bicep pose. And I know many of you may call politics on my choice, but I am going with Grimmick. I know he is losing, and I kind of root for the underdogs, but I have to always go with who I believe is the better man. And I must say, the back development alone, look at those lats on Clarence Ross. Fantastic. Grimmick may have the edge in the trap department. It looks pretty close. The lower lat meet, I believe. Grimmick may have an edge there, but he is tilted thusly and looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, perhaps. Better set of delts, I believe, and a better set of guns, of course. But the reason why I am going with Grimmick, look at the lags. It's a dominant victory in that aspect. Look at even the calves. Wow, does Grimmick have a good set of calves. Close one here because of that back development, those lats of Clarence not to be ignored at all. But I am leaning toward 
John Grimmick slightly here in this pose. Grimmick picks up another well-needed point here in the Abanthai shot. Wow, is he dominant in the ab department. Now, the thighs, at least in this picture, I believe Ross has a better set of wheels in other shots. And yes, it appeared Grimmick had the edge in the wheels. But of course, the tilt of the camera plays a great part in that. And if it was a perfect world, we could have these two on stage with the same photographer and both in their prime. That would be awesome. But we have to go with what we have. And in this shot, at least, John Grimmick does fetch himself, a, like I said, a well-needed point. And it looks like we have made it to the most muscular comparison. And what a comparison this entire match has been. These are two of the greats, and there is a, definitely a reason for that. What a tough decision to make here. Better arms on Grimmick, better set of pecs on Ross. Oh, wow, it appears Ross has a better set of wheels once again. Uh, the, what I have to say, the tilt of the display is probably the reason for that. But man, what a close call. This is a most muscular after all, so let's have another one, and boom. I guess Grimmick is going with the crab position, and Ross is dealing out a nice hand-clasped variety. And look at those pecs on Ross once again. <sighs> if I was leaning toward Ross in the first one, I am definitely leaning toward Grimmick here. Look at those traps and those arms. Really milking every inch of those biceps. A tight one in the most muscular, but the combined efforts of both of these poses. I'm going to give Grimmick a slight point. And that makes for a tie game. And this is the last comparison. I dug this one up, and it was a very difficult decision to make. And as you can see, I mean, come on, which way do you go? The structure of John Grimmick appears to be a little bit better in this one. Look at those thick, powerful legs and those arms as well. But when I look at the waistline and the abs of Clarence combined with those big pecs and not a bad set of arms either. What a tough decision to make. I think based on those pecs and those abs, I might lean slightly towards Ross in this one, but I hate to give him the entire matchup based on this one. So I'm going to have to lean back to the middle of this matchup and this pose right here. This was the most dominant victory in this entire competition. Nobody could argue that Clarence Ross does not win this one. And I know I'm making excuses because I hate to hand John Grimmick a loss because of politics and this and that. He's never lost. But I have to go with my gut. And I have to say, John Grimmick loses. Clarence Ross wins. And he does advance on to the finals of this tournament. Advance. And advance he will indeed. To face Steve Reeves in the finals of these brackets. What a matchup that will be. And I will not be withholding that matchup until I reach 1,000 subscribers and am monetized. Like the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2,000 brackets. I will be showing these, and it won't be too long. Ladies and gentlemen, I must say, these older matchups may not be everyone's cup of tea, but Clarence Ross versus John Grimmick is every bit as important to me as Kai Green versus Phil Heath or Kevin Lavrone versus Dorian Yates. This is a very important matchup, and these were the cream of the crop for their day, as well as Steve Reeves, and that will be a heck of a matchup as well. One to look forward to for sure. I really hope you enjoyed this matchup, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have, I thank you greatly, because... Each and every one of you guys helps me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.